the recording is in progress. And so this is the part where I get nervous because <laughs> the, the attendees, I can't tell who's in the, like in the space waiting to come in until after I press play. Right. But people are coming in, you know, like I, you know, I just, I get nervous, but then people come in and everything is just fine. So hi, everybody. Welcome. If you are here, um, to celebrate the wonderful Amy Timberlake as she celebrates the release of her brand new book in the Skunk and Badger series, Egg Marks the Spot. You're in the right place. And I mean, I knew you would be, so I'm not concerned at all. We are here with Amy Timberlake and Lisa Yee, and I'm so excited because it's a middle grade night. And those of you who are fans of the Silver Unicorn know that we do middle grade. We love middle grade. This is going to be an awesome hour of your time. Um, while we're waiting for more of our friends to join us, though, I just have a couple questions for um, our authors who are joining us tonight. So, Lisa, you've got this background. It's like, much in my office. Yeah. There's just so much. I see, I like, I see Comic Con. I see like dolls, I see the books. So just, I got to know, like, like what's the one thing, like what's the one thing behind you that's like the most specialist thing? The, uh, oh, oh, I can't decide. I did it. I know I did that. I know I love to do that. I know, I know. Hey, my peep. Oh, the peep. This is peepy. -pee. It's spelled P-E-E-P-Y. It's not, you know. And she travels with me. She's like my mascot. And if you were to go to my website, lisayee.com, you will see her with over a hundred famous authors. Oh my God. That is super cool. Oh, little Pee Pee. I'm so glad that we got to meet Pee Pee. That is adorable. Yes. Uh, so Amy, you have, on, on, in contrast, a very <laughs> focused space. Like clearly my eye is supposed to go toward the merch. <laughs> Well, I figure, I figure you don't know who I am. I mean, it's just these, this is what you might know. But me, if I were, if I were around and I were not wearing the red sweater, even you wouldn't even, you might not even, I would just like slip in. I'd be like the invisible person. So is that how you roll? <laughs> Are you like that person? I just like, I'm, I'm cool. I'm just here. Like, be cool. Don't even like, don't even look at me. Just like, be cool. Is that who you are? Like, is this? <laughs> well, I will tell you, I am the person in my family that likes to take photographs. And it's partly because I prefer to be on the other side of the camera. I mean, look, I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine with all this, but I would prefer to be the camera person than the, I, I, you know, my husband says it's, it's going fine, but I say, I'm not sure I'm Amy TV. <laughs> no, I get it. He it's, laughs. It's like, it's like, I think most writers are introverts. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm an introvert, but I'm an extroverted introvert. So like after this, I'm going to go collapse, no. but Hopefully that's after. what I do. Sure. That's what I do too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, introverts unite. Introverts unite. Yes. Know all about that. Oh. Yes. I um I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you two introverts have joined us this evening. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. No, we're just gonna be this is gonna, gonna be the like raucous introverts. Yeah. That's oh. what's gonna happen. It's or gonna we'll be both. the crazy introverts. We're gonna be crazy, like or we'll both just <laughs> go hide under the chair <laughs> no hiding no hiding no not allowed not allowed, allowed for the next 55 minutes like no no <laughs> um I will let you get started um okay all right so this is how this goes hi my name is Kira Wilson Cook I am the events coordinator for the Silver Unicorn uh bookstore uh bookstore the Silver Unicorn bookstore I'm having too much fun in Acton Massachusetts it is my delight to host you this evening in celebration of Amy Timberlake's brand new book, Egg Marks the Spot, which is the second book in the beautiful, wonderful, oh, there we go, we're gonna focus, the Skunk and Badger series, which are just, these are so special. And I just, I, as a mom of two middle grade readers, I just have to say how much I love these books because they're read alouds for your middle graders and that matters. And I hope that we really get into that because this is so special. Um, we are delighted to also host 
uh, Amy's friend, the wonderful, prolific, that's the word I'm looking for, author, Lisa Yi, who is the author of many, many books. Uh, but I have in my <laughs> hand too, so Bobby the Brave is sometimes, and Bobby versus Girls, accidentally, which are the two that are currently at the Silver Unicorn Bookstore. Um, but, you know, Lisa, you've got a whole catalog that I ain't even going to go through, but we are just like delighted. I know, right? Oh my goodness, to have you. I have to say that the Silver Unicorn Bookstore has these two gorgeous, hello, these two gorgeous books with signed book plates, come and get them. And these gorgeous books with signed book plates. As a matter of fact, I think I might have, yes, signed book plates ready for you and available to you at the Silver Bookstore. Come and get them or order them at silverunicornbooks.com. I was hoping there was a book plate in here, but there's not, but that's okay. Cause we, oh, nope, that's not true. It's so nice when you have the other gorgeous amazing you can order them at silverunicornbooks.com this hour is for you and i just want to be clear that you should use the chat and say all the um wonderful things that you want to say about how awesome the books are and how delighted you are and how these two authors are your favorite authors because obviously right but if you have questions for these two authors please go to the Q&A and put your questions there. Lisa will be facilitating Q&A toward the end of their conversation. I will be back, sadly, at the end to break up what I'm sure is going to be an awesome party. And I'm sad about that already, but it's okay because this is going to be great. And we're going to savor this while we have it. Amy, Lisa, thank you so much for doing an event with us this evening. I celebrate you and these awesome books. You're both amazing authors and we're just so grateful for your gifts. So thank you so much for choosing us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. <laughs> hey, is she gone? Should we just like, like go hide now? Get really introverted and- Under the- you know? <laughs> oh, oh, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, she didn't ask me what I was reading. I was so excited because I have this what six and a half pound agate book. Oh my God. Oh, goo, goo, goo. I just read that. Uh, and it's, it's great. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, especially page 132. Oh. Agates. It's Ag all pictures. It's all pictures, so it's kind of like the precursor of a of a graphic novel, except <laughs> it's all pictures. Except there's actually anyway, it's all pictures of agates. So I was like, oh, I have my agate book. I can say I'm. I was reading the agate. She was gonna. Kira was gonna ask us what we were reading, and so I was trying to think about what I was reading. The other book but I'm you, reading. But you were looking at the pictures were you actually reading it or just looking at the pictures i was reading rocks okay <laughs> okay then this oh you know i knew you were gonna do this and i <laughs> i hate to tell you this this is like something i still can't do i can't identify rocks like that way I can show you my rock that is, this is a slice of agate. That's pretty. And this is a geode, which appears in the first book. Do I have one? I don't have, I like, so like I brought my rocks. You did? Well, that's good. We're in the house. I like, my son, when he was little, he's grown up now, he used to collect rocks. And then we had, I had to give him a six rock limit every day because it would like pull his pants down. I mean, he would have like so many <laughs> yeah. rocks. And so, I you know, know this. I think, don't you think that you should talk about why we are talking about rocks? Yes, I think, I think we should get to the, I think I should get to the, do you want me to introduce these books, Lisa? Oh. I can do a quick intro. I've got a really yeah, nice intro. intro. And I just want to okay. say, but before we start, so I got the signed book plate and I thought that in a reality show tv moment I would actually put the book plate in my copy of your book oh but, nice 
Is there a particular page that you'd like it to go on? I have. I, I think you should show us which is the appropriate page. I think since I this is the first time that it's been done, I think you should decide okay. what the page is that should take the book's this place. The beautiful cover. And oh. this is oh. the beautiful. I mean, isn't this nice? This is John Classen. Yay, John! Yay. And then you have the end papers. Oh, so I'm thinking, oh, look at that. Look at that. New rock room, but, new rock room. So it could go here. Oh, yeah. That's a good place because, or, see, I don't know. We don't want to cover anything up, right? I mean, it could go I, under for Phil, and then I could cross out his name, and it could be for Lisa. It could be. I don't want to <laughs> So don't tell Phil. Don't tell Phil. Okay. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it here. Okay. 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 That I'm good. just gonna. I'm just gonna pretend I'm you. I'm gonna put for Phil and Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, look. I there gave it to you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> okay. So tell us. Tell us about Sagan and Badger, the first All book, right. and then your new book. All right, so um, Skunk and Badger. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about these two books. Um, I'm gonna describe the plot and then I'm gonna read a section from Skunk and Badger that's where I got the second book from. Okay, so for those of you um, who do not know the stories yet, Skunk and Badger, is the story of this badger here, and he does important rock work. And here's John Clausen's illustrate. Yes, there. oh, that's nice. Here's here's Badger at his in his rock room at his special rock table with his special rock light, and he seriously thinks about important rock work every day when he goes to the grocery store, and he thinks about important rock work when he comes back from the grocery store, and then he comes comes into his rock room and he sits down and he picks up his magnifying glass in one paw and he thinks, okay, I must focus, 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 and he does important rock work and he loves it. He does it every day. It's just something he was made for he loves it and then one day there's a knock at the door not rap 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 and it is this skunk right here with the red suitcase and the skunk is his unexpected roommate and unexpected roommates never go well like never ever 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 and these two characters are also very different so not only is he un is the skunk unexpected but He's a very different personality, very spontaneous, does all sorts of stuff. <laughs> anyway, they're very different. And I was very worried. I was worried at one point, I really was, that I was that they were so different that I wasn't going to be able to make them come together in any way that would make sense to me. But it's not a spoiler. There's a book too. So they did come together Yay! and they made <laughs> they made it to the next adventure. So in the middle, so it's a, I, this is a good story. So don't miss this one, how they got, how they became roommates. All right. Then in, on page 54, if you already have your skunk and badger, you can turn with me. There is the scene that led to egg marks the spot. So in this scene, badger is showing skunk his geological survey map. And a geological survey map is a map that shows the rocks that are under the landscape. So, you know, it basically, anyway. So if you had a hill outside your window, if you had the, a geological survey map, you could sort of see what, like, what are the rocks that are underneath that hill or inside that hill. Anyway, so Badger is showing Skunk those maps. Badger told Skunk how he used maps on rock finding expeditions. Skunk gasped. Rock finding expedition? What is that? Badger explained about how he camped out. Under the stars, interrupted Skunk. Technically, yes, but with a picnic every day, interrupted Skunk again. I guess, 
I do eat outside, skunk hopped from one foot to the other. What else? What else? So Badger explained how clues in the landscape led to a particular rock. Skunk slapped his paw on the map. Like X marks the spot? Sort of? Yes? Then Skunk turned and said, Badger, what are we waiting for? So they don't have to wait too long because now we have egg marks the spot and egg is the big clue that something else happens besides X. So, cause this is not X marks the spot, this is egg marks the spot. And honestly, I just recommend that you don't read any reviews or anything. You just start at the beginning, read all the way through the end and just, just, don't just just read it and go for the ride. I think that would be the best way to do it. Um, anyway, Badger is going to be searching for a replacement for his spider eye agate, which was taken years ago by his crafty cousin Fisher, who is on the spine of the book. And um, so he wants to replace that agate. That is his favorite agate. It was the rock that got him into, into his love of rocks and geology. And it is his letter A rock for his wall of rocks. So he would like that. And Skunk, of course, wants an adventure. But <laughs> also, he has this hedgehog problem. A hedgehog is taking his book review. <laughs> And he just doesn't, he, he loves the book review more than anything almost. And he does not want to go through another Sunday without his book review. So he just kind of wants to get out of there. So he's going to go, he, he's going to go on an adventure with Badger. And so the two of them go on this camping, rock finding expedition out to campsite number five at Endless Lake. And that is the beginning of Egg Marks the Spot. So there you have it. So now we know. Yes, now, now you know. Now we, yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved both books. I mean, they were amazing. And af after the first one, I'm like, okay, how could she follow this up? I mean, like, what, what could she do? And, and you did. And th this book is so great. In fact, and I'm not going to have any spoilers, but there was one point where I yelped out loud. It was like, oh, really? yeah, well, yeah. you know, you know that part <laughs> I can't say what it is but it was like I did not see that coming and usually I'm really good about that kind of stuff but but I didn't see it coming and so oh, I've, yeah. I've got some different questions for you oh okay so yeah. like I knew we were gonna do this and then I like on social media I I, I had said that I was gonna ask Amy uh difficult and sneaky and embarrassing questions and so I actually, so what I did is I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun if I had Google help me and I Googled what to ask Amy? And did you know there's a columnist called Ask Amy? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. So, so it came up to ask Amy, family member wanted to Zoom a wedding. So how do you feel yes. about that? You know, I, all right. And honestly, I don't ask the questions that other people <laughs> asked you, clearly, so. I honestly think that if you want to get married, I, I don't really see the point in waiting, especially during this time. I'm all for Zoom weddings. Okay. And then, I mean, why not have a party later? Okay, that is, yeah. the, that is the correct answer <laughs> because I'm going to, so this is actually on my wall. Um, that's a correct answer. I didn't know that there would be. I had a oh, Zoom wedding. Yes. So I had. Yeah. Yes. So that is the correct answer. <laughs> no, and so let me ask you some questions about your books, though. Um, I'm gonna go to my my difficult questions here. Okay. So, um, important rock work. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Where did that? The, the the whole thing, but the rocks is a theme going through everything, and. You know, I've got my rocks here. Why rocks? I mean, were you were you sitting down before you started this series, and were you thinking marbles, marshmallows, flowers, rocks? I mean, how did you come up with rocks? 
I think I think there was this early draft. I like a really, really early, early draft where Badger had a stamp collection. And it turns okay. What I remember of that scene was Badger is working with his magnifying glass and he's looking at these stamps. And behind him is this uh, wingback chair and Skunk is sitting in the chair and Skunk is like turning around, you know, so sometimes his feet are up at the top and sometimes they're over the edge and then sometimes they're on the side. And he's like, I'm so bored. This is so boring. Can't we do something else? And I remember I wrote the scene where where I think where Skunk like turns around in the chair like that. And anyway, nothing happened in that draft. It was it was really, really early. I I don't even know if I knew had I, I don't I don't know. I don't know where had I read Winnie the Pooh at that point or not. I I don't know. So then then at well, at some point I had read the A.A. A. Milne, right? Winnie the Pooh, and I was gave myself the writing challenge of trying to write something in that style of writing and an episodic thing. And I came back to this scene. I, I had Badger and Skunk, and I thought that next time it was rocks. And I, I think that that came from. Um, <laughs> My uncle was a geologist. I didn't actually think that rocks were that interesting growing up, but I think tell that, that. What? Tell him that. <laughs> well, I thought he was really cool. I thought my uncle was really cool. I used to write him. I used to write him as an action hero. Like, so he was like, he, cause he rode in helicopters and I just, and one time he was chased by a rhinoceros, I guess. And I, I think he was. I think he really was. Maybe he, maybe he really wasn't. Or oh my cat. gosh! I'm, or I, I might have made it, made that up. I don't know. Anyway, so he was a geologist, and my, and then my grandfather was a lobbyist for the copper industry, and so when I visited them in the southwest, they had weird rocks all over their yard. That's how they decorated the yard. Was with these stuff from a copper mine and there was old mining equipment and then there were cacti um so i just think i just think that i found my love of rocks by writing badger i mean now i enjoy rocks uh, it's really hard it's really hard it's a science and i find it really challenging but i um but I enjoy it. It's so I think I found the right thing for Badger because it felt right at that point. And I think I think that I sort of came into my my family's love of rocks and geology through Badger. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, your, your your love of stamps, though. <laughs> so okay, here's here's like a an open secret. Um, Amy and I are pen pals, and and we've we are other. Okay, I'm going to say the year and you do the math. <laughs> We've known each other since 2004. But so I have like a cereal box that I covered with it, but I keep letters. And then like, look at these. So these are, oh, I don't have so I don't put anyone's address. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's true. So, I mean, Amy's like, sends me these wonderful things with, with, wonderful stamps <laughs> oh yeah the stamps i love stamps don't you love stamps? i mean i do love stamps it's just i, love I don't think i don't think i want to collect them i mean i i don't know the collecting do you collect stamps did i well, just <laughs> i I, well, I, don't, I have a lot because i write a lot of letters and i just you know i just keep buying them when they come out because i figure i can always use them so, but I like stamps. But okay, so let's go back to rocks. Um, you have a rock book, right? Yes. That the egg book. Heavy. Yeah. So. Ugh. So you can't identify rocks, though. I mean, because I. I know. See, this is the thing. The thing that I just the other day I was thinking this, and I was thinking, 
I, the thing that you most want to do is pick up a rock from the ground and then know what it is. Okay. And okay, so I am not that good at this. I mean, well, that does look kind of like a quartz or something, okay. but I'm sure somebody else could really. Oh my gosh. All right. So, all right. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Do you know okay. what it is? I am not the rock expert. I don't write about rocks. <laughs> you are the rock expert. So I want you to name I, the rock. If you, I mean, and it could be like a person's name or rock name. So what would you name this rock? Ah, uh, well, you know, I think because it would just be funny, I would name it like Joe. Okay. So we're actually <laughs> going to do that now. Because then I could talk to it, you know, and I could say, just I could just name. have like normal conversations and the rock would be just so steady. So yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe. what do you think, Joe? Yeah, me too. Do you want, exactly. we've got our whole bunch. Do you want Joe to have a friend or just be like solo? Um, no, Joe is good. I think Joe is good. Okay. okay. So now that we've covered rocks. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I think that probably is. I, I wonder if that's one of the harder things to do is actually like the other day I was walking along Lake Michigan and I was like, why can't I just pick up this rock and know what it is? And I think, you know, between glaciers and all sorts of other things, I think it ends up being kind of hard to identify rocks. But and I think you have to know exactly where you are in the world and, you know, what, anyway, I think you have to know a lot and I am just not at that skill level. I hate to say it. Um, so let's just, I okay, mean, so, I, okay. So I won't <laughs> put you on the spot then about rocks. I'm going to ask you an easy question. Okay. okay. So um, egg marks the spot is about secrets betrayals and lies mm. tell us your innermost secrets betrayals and lies <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh are you are just one just tell us a secret a betrayal or a lie right. you don't have to do all three all right i will i i mean this is kind of a secret i was born on friday the 13th that seems like something you shouldn't go around telling a lot of people, right? <laughs> okay, so that's a good secret. Okay, tell us a betrayal then. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, are you, oh, here, okay, here, I'm going to make it easier for you. Yeah, tell I know. Us, I, tell us a betrayal or a lie, and then we'll guess if it's an actual betrayal or if it's a lie. You mean if I'm making up a betrayal? Right. Oh <laughs> Amy, I'm so bad. Amy, I'm so bad at this. You're a writer. I you, know. This is just. You I, write, I just, Oh you write, my goodness. You write stories. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my gosh. Oh, but you see, really, the thing is, is I'm by myself with my computer the whole okay, time. No, nobody's here nobody's just watching you and me not here it's just just us we're just chatting just uh tell me your oh. ATM number or something you know uh, um all right uh no i you know what i am failing completely my mind has gone completely blank and all i can think of are like actual true betrayals lies and secrets and okay. i can't i can't okay I can't we won't we, we won't <laughs> i think this is so funny that I'm we'll like, do that oh, later goodness. we'll do that later okay just the two of us for the reality for the re tv no. show okay for the reality tv show okay so on page yes 32 on page 32 yes Okay, so you've got, you've got like all these great sounds that you've written. Kaboom, put 
those kind of noises. Yeah. I want to know, when you're writing all these great sounds, do you like sit alone or in a crowded place and say it out loud to see how it sounds? Yeah, I do. I um, I actually had a pretty, okay, so on page 32 and 33, we have pada pada pada, and it's the sound of the rain. I actually think it's the sound of a rain gutter. So if you really want to, because that to me just sounds like the rain is something about a rain gutter, you but know, like the rain. But how do you know how to spell it? Oh, yeah. So what I do is I, I, um, I literally sit and I, I actually usually end up doing exactly this. I close my eyes. I hear, I just close my eyes. I hear the sound and I just start moving my mouth. <laughs> and I, and I put, a, put a little air behind it and I go, okay, so what am I hearing? Da, 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 pa, pa, pa. No, it's more of pa, pa, pa. Pada, 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 pada. So to me, it's like pop. Because I think when the water drops, you're hitting a pool, right? Pool, nice pool. All right, you get that little, you get that little pop. So I want to make that pop sound. So I'm thinking pada, pada, pada. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make it almost. And then I'm also thinking about, so what it sounds like to me, Pada, pada, pada. And then I'm also trying to think about if somebody were reading this out loud and they just came to that word on the page, how can I make them sound right? And so I try not to use vowels that will be confusing or, you know, or anything like that. So I'm just, I, I'm just slowing down and I'm really, I really am closing my eyes. I have to really listen. Because so you, do, I'm listening. you do an amazing job. I mean, like I read it, I can hear it. Oh, really? You know, oh, I, good. Oh, good. Wondering how you know how to spell things. Because like, I don't know about you, but like for me, spelling is like my worst subject. I can't spell anything, but it's like the, it, it, it brings the words to life on the page. Okay. Mm -hmm. On page. 16. But you don't have to ever worry about spelling if you're making up sound effects. You can just you don't have to worry about it. It's awesome. I'm not, I'm actually not a good speller. I can actually tell you that I'm not a good speller, but, um, but I love sound effects because you don't have to spell. <laughs> <laughs> and we have proofreaders and copy editors who are brilliant. Um, so you have, you have so much food in the book because skunk is this wonderful shop. And, but you also talk about on page 66, Badger, you talk about him getting fire cocoa. Oh yeah. And I was wondering, because you sent me one time. Oh yeah. If you remember, but you sent me. Yes. This hot cocoa. So, I mean, was this inspired by the book or, or did you have this and you thought, oh, I love this hot cocoa. I'm going to put it in the book. I mean, how did, you know, uh, d does your real life intersect with stuff that's happening in your story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the Coco is, I think, from um, Frontera Restaurant in Chicago. And so it isn't that Coco. It's, he actually has this Coco. But I mean, that is exactly the kind of Coco that it is, which is with um, hot pepper. But the first time I ever had that was at, there's a Frontier restaurant in Chicago, has a smaller restaurant on the side called Choco, X-O-C-O. -O. And um, they serve a hot cocoa that's called the Aztec. And it's uh, really, it's really chilies and cocoa ground into water. And it's really, um, it's really hot and I loved it. And so the food in this book in particular is coming from, it's coming from Frontera, actually Frontera restaurant. And the, I'm trying to find that section where he, all right, he reads where he does the huevos monteleños, but huevos monteleños, 
I think I, let's see. Um, oh, wait, here it is. It's on page 24. And I, that is actually a breakfast I've had at Frontera. <laughs> I, I, I marked that down. I, see, page 24. Um, yeah, because it sounded so good. Why don't you, can you, why don't you read that to us so we, we know okay. what we're talking about, when we talk about the, the food in the book. Okay. 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 So Badger is sitting at the kitchen table um, and Skunk is cooking and he brings over and Badger is, <laughs> food is Badger's kind of kryptonite. So he, <laughs> anyway, he loves food. Okay. So Skunk crossed the room with a rimmed plate. Huevos Monteleños, one of the best breakfasts ever invented, a fried egg and a tostada balanced on a black bean island. The island rose out of a red sea. Cinnamon, chilies, roasted tomatoes, fresh peas and fried plantains bobbled at the island's edges. Badger did not hesitate. He picked up his spoon and marooned himself on that eggy island. When Badger looked up again, he found himself alone. And one of the things I love about Badger is that as soon as he eats something, he becomes so engrossed in what he's eating that it's like anything else can happen in the room. And I love having this device that, you know, basically as soon as Badger starts eating, the whole room can empty out and he won't notice it. And these books are all told from Badger's point of view. So it's just like this amazing device and it's also really funny I think because I definitely I definitely feel like I've known people and I like food a lot but my well I, I'm thinking I I'm thinking about my brother and my husband really like food and so if you just give them something to eat that they like it's like the world just drops off for them they are gone well, I mean, that was that was clear in the in the first book. I mean, that it's food brought them together. I mean, um, you know, Badger was ready to get Skunk out of there, and then he started smelling the food that that Skunk was making, and uh, you now there they are. In a <laughs> <laughs> so this book is about lots of, or it's about secret treasures. Like everybody has a secret treasure. Do you have a secret treasure? Uh, a secret once you tell it. Um. Oh, I don't. I. I. Um. A ah, secret. Well, I mean, I enjoy lots of things. I. I guess. I guess just. I guess. I mean, it's not really a treasure, but I guess I. I just love. I love reading, and I love going for long walks, and you know. I would say, I would say those are some of my things. I also, I don't know. I have lots of things I like to do. I don't actually have treasures anymore because we moved to this really small place and I had to, I had to kind of, I had to kind of decide <laughs> what to get rid of. And I got rid of most of everything. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's I'm sort making, of sad. I'm, I'm <laughs> making a note to myself to send you a treasure. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. So. I am thinking about getting a portable manual typewriter. I could see that being a treasure. I, I love, I have an old typewriter. I have an old manual typewriter that's like, I don't know how old. I mean, it's, you know, with the ribbon and everything. But I, I think though that if, if we had to use typewriters today, I couldn't be an author. I mean, do you, yeah, I make so many mistakes and cut and paste and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, I can't, I can't give up to cut and paste. Yeah. I, I, it's, I don't think I could do that. But you were talking about like, like books and walking and stuff. So like you have the New York Times book review. I love, I love, I love the New York. I love, I love the New York Times book review, or I guess the New York Times book review. I really, I enjoy reading that. That is one of, that is straight from me. A skunk reads the new yak times book review yeah times yes yes so i mean yaks make the best book reviewers in their world <laughs> well, <laughs> Which makes me... not not just in their world in all worlds all the yaks that i know really um, they've been really good so they're... is it there is it the shaggy bangs or the hump of nutrients 
I think it's a combination. And like when they are writing their reviews, they, they you know, like with their, with their oh, they put that yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. So, so would you say that you are more skunk than badger? Um, I probably am more badger than skunk, but I love, I, I, I do, I do really appreciate and love the skunk part of myself. And I am glad that I do have the little part of me. And I actually think these days, I definitely feel like I just need to give skunk more rain in my life and, and just enjoy. I like, I like how much skunk enjoys the world and looks at things and has wonder. And um, I He's definitely. Very, very positive. I mean, he yeah. can do something and just turn it around, whereas Badger is more, uh, you know, yeah. dark side of things. So, yeah. okay, so we've got first book, second book. Can we count on a third? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's under contract. It's, well, it's okay. definitely, it's going, to, it's going to happen. And it's being written. It's not, it hasn't been written this month because I'm doing promotion for the book, but I am definitely working on it and I know how it goes. Um, it's not, and there, there are three books and I'm thinking of them as kind of a, an arc, like, a, like it's one big novel in a way with three parts. Um, and yeah, yay, I love those bookmarks. They did a nice job. Uh, so anyway, so the, it's not like, the I'm definitely done with these stories after book three I mean I have I, I have a, at least one more idea that I would really like to do but I we just have to I guess we'll just have to see how it goes on this on this run and then um yeah so there definitely is another one and I'm looking I'm enjoying it it's really fun to write it's what's really your, fun to what's write your process for it like for example I'm working on a Oh, yeah, secret series that I can't talk about. But I I had a subplot that was so great. I spent like a couple months on it until I realized it had taken over the book. And so I had oh, to pull yeah. it out and I thought, okay, this is its own book. So it'll be its own book. Do you, did you did you do that with these books? Did you ever go down paths that ended up being a dead end or that <laughs> you're going to use in the in the third book? Yeah, I I do. I have well, there's a lot of puns in these books and a lot of jokes that I'm trying to tell. And I keep track of those. So like the ones that get cut out, I then write in a book so that I have them for later. So I have I have that. Um I do go down lots of dead ends. I and yeah, oh, that it's very painful. I I, I feel for you <laughs> when I think about it, I go, oh. Was, was the second book easier to write because, you oh, know, yeah. with the first book, you're, you're figuring out the characters and their world and who they are and all that kind of stuff. But the second book, you, you know them. So yeah, I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be easier. Well, it, it was in that way that I knew the characters. I think that absolutely was helpful, but it, it wasn't faster for me. I, I really thought it was gonna be faster on the second book and um, it wasn't faster. I, um, I, think, I think it was partly because I, this is gonna sound like the books don't go together. So this is, it, they do go together. The first book is, is a buddy genre and I was I was playing with I basically in this series I'm kind of playing with different genres and it keeps it really interesting for me so the first book is a buddy genre the two characters how do they come together if you think about the odd couple that movie that would be a that would be kind of a that would be the genre and then in this book I'm doing um a camping slash treasure hunt genre. So it's a different, since it's a different genre, there were just different things that I knew I had to hit in the story. And I was spending a lot of time thinking about, well, what makes a good treasure hunt story? You know, what, what kind of things have to happen? And, and also what happens in camping stories? 
So <laughs> there aren't a lot of camping. The camping genre is a very small genre if it exists at all. But the treasure hunt genre definitely exists. There's a lot of treasure hunts, yeah. So um, we've got some questions and I wanna make sure we get to them. So Chris go, hi, hi Chris. We, we know each other from Instagram and stuff like that. Um, Chris wants to know more about us being pen pals. How did, uh, who started it? I mean, how did we? I don't know how that happened. How did that happen? Did I, did I send something to you or did you? One of us, I, one of us had to start it. I yeah, know. I mean, I do know that, um, I do know that during the pandemic, I was looking for some, a pen pal. I was definitely looking and I, you know, yeah, at least I was there. Well, okay. So, <laughs> I know I was looking for it. So what, what we, what, what Amy and I do is we, we not just, we, don't, we not just, I, I'm good with words. We actually do, um, what would you call it? Like, it's almost like treasure hunt letters because like within a letter you know amy will have read first read second and there'll be secret secret things inside each and so our letters are like progressive letters and then also like so in in this one which i'm going to cover our addresses um amy had put a shell inside oh my gosh yeah but she got crushed <laughs> So I open it and this like white powder <laughs> is falling oh. all over and I'm like anthrax. You know? I know. Oh my gosh. As soon like, as you said white powder, I just thought like, white powder everywhere. <laughs> but but it's it's so fun. And so like what we do is we we go back and forth and, and we send these more like packages because they're like letters on weird stationery and things like that and and we ask each other tips about like you know what are you reading and we'll send lists of things and suggestions and it's just I mean anytime I get a letter from Amy it's like okay I actually save it and you know it's like I'm gonna wait I'm not just gonna open it right away I'm gonna wait until I can take a breath and sit down and and, and really enjoy it um okay someone uh Built. And I feel the same way about Lisa's letters. Thank they're you. really great. They're crazy. I mean, they're just crazy. So it's so fun. So You're like, have, what will be in there? We have a reader named Phil who would like to know if Amy has any baking tips that she can share with us. Ah, uh, yes. Michael Ruhlman's Ratio Cookbook. I highly recommend this book it's basically it gives you the baking ratios so that you can break free of recipes and make your own muffins so also on my website under on, i think it's under the on the skunk and badger page i do have skunk's muffin recipe which is actually an adaptation of michael ruhlman's ratio muffin recipe but I love it because for years I was you know I was kind of I had this one little muffin cookbook and I would just make those recipes over and over again I have to have muffins in the morning I don't know why I have to have muffins in the morning that's a secret kind of anyway but that book the ratio the ratio so it's michael ruhlman r-u-h-l-m-a-n and it gives you the ratios for everything so um from pound cake to making crepes to pancakes everything is a ratio based on flour and the amount so it, it makes you rethink all of this and then you can basically make it a batter for almost anything if you just know the right ratio so did you know <laughs> One tablespoon is three teaspoons. Yes, I didn't know yes. that. I didn't. It know took that. me. It, it, it. I just. I just recently learned it. So, yeah, but it's. It was a. It was like a pandemic, learning thing. Um. So is Skunk going to be? Uh, Andy would like to know if Skunk's going to be writing a cookbook. I mean, I think he should. Yeah. Well, that would be. That would be. That would be a good idea for him. 
I think you would, I think you would enjoy that. <laughs> and it could be reviewed by the yaks. Oh, the yaks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. So, so Delia, who's five, would like to know if there's a favorite book that you've written. Well, that is an interesting question. And we should ask Lisa the same question because I am wondering, I'm wondering what she thinks about this. But here's my issue is that my favorite book and lots of writers say this. So that's why I think we should ask Lisa to see what she says too. My favorite book is always the one that I'm writing right now. And here's why, because if I don't like the book that I'm writing right now, if I think it's the, the last book is my favorite book, then I will never write the book that I'm writing right now because I will think that my best book is behind me. <laughs> and I can't, I just mentally can't, can't do it. So I always think that the best book is the one I'm writing right now, or it's the one that I'm about to write after I finish the one I'm writing right now. What do you think, Lisa? My best book is behind me. No, I'm just saying, I'm, well, I'm just saying that because all my books are behind me. Oh, okay, <laughs> uh, so we got a joke in there. No, um, so my favorite, my, actually it hasn't come out yet, but this book, um, Maisie Chan's Last Chance, this is, um, it's a middle yeah. grade and it, it actually does have a recipe inside it. But this, this, this book was the book of my heart. It's about um, an 11 year old girl from Los Angeles who goes to Last, Man Last Chance, Minnesota to help take care of her grandfather. And um, her, her grandparents own this Chinese restaurant that's been in the family for over a hundred years. And it's a, it's a parallel story about Maisie, it's contemporary, but her great great grandfather who came over in the 1860s. And so it goes back and forth between those two. And um, it was like, it was a pandemic book, meaning, I mean, I was just cloistered writing it. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think that that's my favorite. And it's not, like I said, it's not out yet. It comes out in February. But, um, you know, I don't know about you, Amy, but I don't read my books once they're published. Do you go back and reread your books? No, I don't tend to. I don't, yeah, I don't tend to. I mean, most most authors I know say they, they don't they don't read their books. In fact, I've had people come up to me and said say things like, well, blah, 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 blah. And I'll say like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And they'll be like, well, that was in your book. And you're <laughs> yes. like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I often, I, I often can't remember what I've cut out of that yes. book. So I'll remember a draft that's like, you know, three, and I'll say, well, I told, I told you in that book that XXX, and then I'll realize, oh, we cut that, didn't we? <laughs> I do that too, or I change names. I change the names. The main characters always have the same, you know. Their name is the same from the beginning of the book to the end. Huh. But then some of the minor characters, I'll change their names and at, at the very end, and then I'll forget who they are or what they're called, and then I'll quote them, and nobody knows what I'm talking about. So, yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And huh. how, how far ahead do you write? Like, I know that you're going to do the third Skunk and Badger book. Are you thinking of anything beyond that series right now? Or do you focus, you know, on, okay, I'm gonna stay in the skunk and oh. world right now and, and not think of anything else? Well, I am, I am staying pretty much in this world for the moment. I mean, right now I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish these three and then I'm thinking I need a vacation. And, oh, hello. And uh, yeah, but, um, but in the back of my head, you know, there's the book that I um, that I stopped when I wrote when I started writing these, and that's in the back of my head. And then, and then, you know, I'm always looking for a shorter project, you know, something that I think might be like I don't know, an interesting picture. I'm in fact, I have this sort of fantasy of writing a picture book biography at one point but I have not found a topic yet that really works for me. So, yeah. 
There's, Joe. There's your picture book. There's my biography. Joe. Yeah. Joe. Joe. Story of a <laughs> There you go. Right here. Silver right there. Joe, the rock story. Like Joe, like colon, a story of the earth's crust. Yeah, or Joe. Joe rocks. Joe. Joe rocks. There we go. So we get a percentage, but just a little bit. <laughs> Joe, a story of the eras. <laughs> there you go. Joe, Joe, a story in layers. Stop it. Don't give me Okay. Stuff. Okay. This is going to go another <laughs> hour with titles for your Joe book. <laughs> the Joe yeah i'm thinking no story in layers that's the one like that's the money that's money we, right there that is go. the book and we know where you can have your book launch <laughs> yeah. yes do it um this has been incredible this has been so much fun i'm i know i personally learned a lot i have really just loved this so much lisa you're an incredible like interviewer can we talk about that like can we talk about how Thank amazing you, you are Oh, thank you. Well, I've known oh. Amy for, did we ever, figure, did we ever do the math? From the, yeah, the, no, 2003. Or 2003. Oh, 2004. Yeah, it would have been 2004. That would no, be what is it? 17 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Uh, I mean, and that was like at the beginning of both our careers. Good yeah, that, yeah, that was, oh. that was, wait. Oh my God, this is so this my, This is my first book. Yeah. Oh, Yay. So awesome. Oh, yeah. That was a good, yes. Lisa, Lisa was getting, Lisa was getting the humor award that they have at SCBWI. Well, you were getting a Golden Kite Award. Yeah, it was fun. We were sitting at the same table. And her mother was there and Arthur Levine, her editor was there and she was trying to get Arthur Levine to give up Harry Potter secrets. Oh yeah. I'm um, saying that her mother needed to, her mother, who is the sweetest woman you will ever, ever meet. Her mother needed to know. Do you remember that? I, I do remember and he wouldn't <laughs> tell me. And I, the thing that my takeaway from, from our first meeting was that Amy sat there the entire time with her salad and her arms around it like this. Oh yeah, it was nice. Because she didn't want anyone to take away her salad, but she didn't know when she was going to give her acceptance speech and she didn't want to eat and get lettuce in her teeth because they you had big screens. It was so big. I was like, my teeth were going to be five feet by four feet and all I could think of was that if there is a hint of lettuce everybody will go third incisor or whatever they will be like looking going look at that green flag <laughs> meanwhile you had something in your nose no I'm kidding I you didn't. Didn't. no you didn't you didn't you didn't I'm kidding I'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no I knew it I knew it Oh my I God. should be I should be behind the camera. I tell you, I should be behind the camera. You're wonderful in front of the camera. You both are. Stop it. This has been wonderful. I am so delighted. I'm going to um I am going to get these books and just say thank you, thank you, thank you, because you're wonderful. Um, let's just say this has been awesome. And you are wonderful, and your books are amazing. And Skunk and Badger and Eggs Marks the Spot. Are amazing books and there's going to be a third one I think that's what Lisa just said so yay and I hope there's a fourth and a fifth yeah seven, keep keep going keep it going seventh. like go on vacation but then come back to this universe because it's a very good one these are special books come get them come get them with the beautiful book plates at the Silver Unicorn bookstore they are available to you both in person look at that and online at silverunicornbooks.com. Lisa's books are also available to you with the book plates. Yay! So gorgeous, absolutely amazing, fabulous at Silver Unicorn Bookstore here in Acton or on silverunicornbooks.com. Y'all are amazing.
this was so much fun. What a fun and awesome hour. Please, like together and individually with new friends, with old friends, I don't care. Come back. Come back and see us. Please, please, promise, please. We will. I'd love, I'd love to come to Silver Unicorn. So I'm very excited. Yes. Awesome. Yay. Yay. All right. In the meantime, keep writing. You too. Keep um, pen palling. Can't wait to hear more about that. Stay safe out there. And all of y'all who are in the audience, thank you so much for coming this evening. Stay safe out there. Come visit us. Come see us on our website. Um, and, you know, come back for our next event. We have a bunch coming up this next week. We are hosting a, um, we're hosting um, Seth Wickersham at the Bull Run in Shirley to talk about his brand new book, It's Better to Be Feared About the Patriots, if you're in the, if you're into the Patriots. <laughs> um, we have um, Sophie Escabez and her, oh. her and fellow writer, Nicole Lesperance, who are talking about um, the, uh, the Witches of Brooklyn and the next book in that series called What the Hex, which is amazing. It's a graphic novel. So that's on, uh, that's on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, oh, because I'm going off the top of my head, we have one more event. Oh no, I just lost it. Come to our website, silverunicornbooks.com. Go to the events tab. You'll see it. Oh, and we have a Saturday morning story time at 11. Debbie, Florence, Michiko, Michiko um, and Jamie. Um, Debbie's my friend. Yes. Oh. And then for Dakota Crumb and um, uh, Nikki Nakayama. So they're picture books. They're awesome. Like if you're going to be, like if you're in the area, come for those. Yay. Um, we have events going on until December. So please come and see us. We can't wait to see you. All right. I know I just butchered all of those book names in front of my boss. So he's just like, what do you even do? Like, why, like, why do I even have you when you don't know the events? I feel so embarrassed, but yo, come to the website. They're all there. Friends, thank you so much for coming. Have a great evening. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Kira. Thank you, Thank Lisa. You so much, Amy. Thank you. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye y'all.